Thank you for those who will worship after. Thank you for those who have worshiped for us, Lord, on behalf of us. So do more, Lord. Do more than we could ask or imagine. Do more. Do more in your people. Do more in our hearts. Do more than we can see, Lord. Do more so we can walk into and walk with and go with and sing with. abundantly more, Lord. Do more, Lord, than we can ask or imagine or even think, Lord, according to that power that works in us. Thank you, Lord, even this morning, strengthening your people. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. For the time is coming and now is when those who worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have need in your life, would you just put your hand up? signify it not to a pastor or to a worship team but to the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Living God no apprehensions so Lord you see your people and you see their hands so we declare that as for us the Lord the Lord he is God the Lord he is God God, you see your people right now. Lord, I ask that you would move upon your people, that even this morning, as we've worshipped you, you're moving on our behalf, changing things that need to be changed. Some things need to be thrusted forward. Lord, thank you for doing that. Some things have had a roadblock. Thank you for breaking through the roadblock. Baal Perazem. Some things, Lord, need to be reversed. Thank you for doing that, Lord. But God, we thank you in your kindness and your mercy for touching your people, healing what needs to be healed and restoring what needs to be restored, that new life may come in. In Jesus' name. Lord, where there's been hopelessness, God of hope, thank you for coming in. We speak life into those areas. We speak life into those areas. And Lord, those some places that still need to die, those places that still need to be surrendered, thank you, merciful God, that you take us there, holding our hand all the way. In Jesus' name. Actually, it happened when Elijah was having his, his showdown with all the 450 prophets of Baal. And once God had come and poured fire down, all the people had changed their opinion and they said, The Lord, the Lord, He is God. Can we say this this morning? Say, The Lord, the Lord, He is God. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a praise clap this morning, please.
I just sense by the by the spirit of the Lord this morning the Lord's going to tell some of you this morning don't be afraid don't be afraid because some things are going to come to an abrupt stop but you need to know that it's the Lord it's the Lord and he's allowing it he'll carry you all the way through for some of you some things are going to begin But do not be afraid. Do not be concerned. For it is the Lord. He is doing this. For times and seasons, they're changing. And there are things that are changing. And there are things that have to happen. Things have to stop. Things have to start. But it is the Lord. It is the Lord. He's with you and he's already promised you that he would never leave you and he would never forsake you. It is the Lord. It's okay. It is the Lord. Lord, let that presence come upon your people that even when Peter, when he was in the boat and he looked to the shore and he saw that it was you and he proclaimed it. It's the Lord. And he jumped into the water just to be with you. God, thank you for that uh, uh, building up in our heart that even if it's in difficult times, we see you, we'd have that. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Thank you for starting new things that have to start, Jesus, and for bringing things to an end that have to stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, amen. Amen. Can you keep playing just a little longer? I know your fingers, you're okay. Praise God. We have just a few announcements, but um, our men's conference, uh, if you're going to the men's conference and you're in this room, can you come on up front? We want to pray for you. And I'm going to ask Ray to come on uh, Tuesday nights. Uh, we have prayer in the church. And I want you to come up and just face the people, if you don't mind. Um, on Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, we do prayer in-house. And we've been going through an intercession set, um, which is really cool because it's been bringing us... Um, Adrian is a part of this group as well, and Bernie. But it's been, it's been really awesome. And so one thing that we've done this past Tuesday is we each found a scripture that we really loved... And we took a situation, a real life situation, and we applied the word because that's really what makes winners. And so Ray's word, which I mean, it's all God's word, but there's different ones that we pull out. And do you know that God's word can apply to every situation in life? And so these men have set aside their time. They've invested. Uh, they are going for the roar to get their roar back. And so as a church, we can actually bless our men. And I think there are, Steve, could you get Dale and Morgan? Morgan, are you, you're going to the men's conference? You're not now? Get up here then. We'll just pretend that you are. Come on. Maybe this is the way. Maybe this is the way. Dale, you're going to the men's conference? Is there any other men out there that are going to the men's conference? Theodore? Please collect the Theodore. We have amazing men in this house. And if you don't know it, I'm telling you right now, we have amazing men in this house. And so Ray is going to release this. Uh, you guys point your hands towards them. And she's going to release the scripture that she had on Sunday over their life and this conference weekend. Amen. Okay, so the word that I go to almost every day, I look at it, it's in my bathroom. It's Jeremiah 29:11. It says, for I know the plans that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So Lord, those are deep, strong words. Those are words for these mighty men of this church and these mighty men of Lac Labiche, Lord, that their future will not be forgotten, Lord. Their future is of mighty plans, your plans, Lord. And we just pray that 
when they travel to Grand Prairie and they take part in this conference, that the words that are meant for them and their future will be implanted in each and every one of them. And when they come back from this, their world will almost be and their future will almost be brand new, Lord, that the path forward will be an easy path. It might be a narrow path, but it will be an easy path going straight to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, and we just pray that it's going to be a, a wonderful weekend, and uh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, guys. So we just release that God knows the plans over your life. Amen. So we bless you as a church to go and be like little altar junkies and get up there and get whatever you need for God. And if you see other people up there before you, that means they love God more than you. So that's a, that's a man challenge. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. And Theodore left the room again. So I think he's an usher. Yeah, he hears me. Thank you for that microphone out there. So Rachel, if you could put that picture up there. This is Theodore Jenkins and Peyton Cardinal. And let me just say they are planning on getting married. So they are engaged. And so, yeah, we're really excited for the Jenkins family and for the Cardinal family. Amen. Yeah, Peyton wanted to come up and speak, and I said, not today, honey. <laughs> Don't mute me. Don't mute me. I know. I see that happening. <laughs> Amen. That's so awesome. We also have a uh, needs board, and Melody and Claudia are going to come and just share very quick what that's all about. It's out on the bulletin board, and we haven't talked about it enough, so these ladies are going to help you know what it's about. Uh, we, we have a board on the left side. When you come in through the door, there's a big uh, bulletin board, and on there we've got an, an um, information sheet. If you have anything that is in good working order or in good condition that you want to give away, it, this is not a garage sale site, it's for the people within the church who might have a need. And if you can take, want to receive any of that stuff, just contact me or Melody, and we'll give you the name of the person and the contact information, and you make your own arrangements for picking it up. On the opposite side is a place where you can put any need that you might have. And we'll see if we can't connect you with somebody in the church who might be able to fulfill that need. Just so you know, it, needs don't have to be uh, like items. They don't have to be something tangible. It could be something that um, maybe you need help to clear your snow or maybe you need help to move or maybe like that type of thing as well if you have a need. And then if someone in the church, yeah, ride to somewhere for sure. Yeah, to Edmonton. <laughs> Um, but yeah, someone else in the church might be able to help you with that. So if everybody just kind of takes a look at that board and if you can fulfill any of those needs or help anybody out, it's, um, that's what it's all about. So, and if when you, when you have something or you're available, if you can let Claudia or I know and we'll post it and we'll take it down when she let us know that it's been fulfilled. There's nothing there. So we need some things on the needs board. Yeah, we had just started it because I think there's things that we just discard and we think, ah, oh, nobody needs that. There might be somebody right in the church that could use that. And I know, uh, for instance, uh, Nameo is Namayo. I'm sorry, you spell it Nameo, but it's, it, she's just new to Lac La Biche. Uh, she is more French than English, so we will count on our uh, Louise also. So, uh, But she needed some things for her home. And it was really challenging to try and find some things. And it's like, well, why don't we actually find out the household of faith first so if there's some things that you need or maybe that you have and I like what Claudia said it's not a garage sale site we're not going to do any dickering or anything it's going to be something that you're going to give away in fact there was uh, one on there it was I think Claudia finds these amazing things someone was giving away a refrigerator perfectly good working refrigerator and they they had upgraded their appliances and then they just said whoever needs it can have it I think that's a good thing. So make sure that you are always checking because it's always going to be changing. If you need people, like Melody said, the shovel your snow or rake your leaves or, you know, cultivate the garden or you just, whatever it is, let's just try and meet the needs in the house. Amen? Amen. So we will, let's, let's have our kids come on up here.
And then we'll also pray for our, oh, and the winner is Winter Amadeus. We are ready. Oh, you guys, this is awesome. This is awesome. And yeah, David and Heather actually are teaching now, which is really fun. That's awesome. There's more kids coming in. So, Lord, we thank you for our kids. We thank you for our kids' teachers. Lord, we thank you for who they are. We thank you for our babies. We thank you for the soon-to-be, the babies on board. Lord, we thank you for a fruitful house. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you help our kids to know you really, really well? Really, really well. We ask for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, I didn't pray for your offering. There's always so many announcements. It's hard to figure out what to do. Put your hand on your heart, please. Lord, we don't want to rush along and not give you space. And Lord, we believe that we have done that and are doing that. And Lord, then it comes to finances. And Father, it, it has split churches over it on what people think they should do or shouldn't do. And there's just so much information out there that can say, that can back up whatever we believe. But Lord, as for this house, we believe your word says to be tithers. We believe that your word says that generous living opens doors and gates for us. And so Father, I'm asking for refreshing and renewal over every heart, breakthrough in Jesus' name over finances, over how we think of finances, over how we even covet finances. Lord, wherever uh, there is financial, what's the word, Lord? Some call it prosperity, but we know it's so much more than just Canadian currency, Lord. It's so much more. But Father, I thank you that you unlock our hearts to trust you even more. And Father, we thank you for the faithfulness that's in this house. Lord, because of the faithfulness, we can be in a house in here today with heat and lights and investing around the world. Lord, we can do that because of you. Thank you for the jobs that you give us, for the homes that we live in, for our full fridges and pantries and fuel tanks. And Lord, even where the gas prices rise, I thank you that your blessings overtake us in Jesus' name. Lord, bless every giver. Bless them in ways that they'll know it's you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we give one big Thank you. Round of applause for the Lord and for the worship team as well, please. Those are cute kids, eh? I wonder if it changes over generations because I'm looking at them kids and I'm thinking how cute they are. And I see the one with glasses and I go, man, that's cute. Because when I was in school, it wasn't cute. It's like... I wonder if my parents planned on doing this. I'm going to make this kid stand out and look hideous so that when he goes, goes to school, he gets picked on. So you go with these pop bottle glasses and these horrible clothes. Yeah. You do the slow motion, no. Like the frost this morning. When I looked out the window and I saw our vehicles, yeah, the slow motion, no. No. Part of the seasons, Amen. So, God, you're so good, and uh, Lord, totally new season, and you are doing some great and amazing things, Father. We, we choose to surrender, and even today, um, Lord, I surrender to your goodness and to your presence. Holy Spirit, would you speak to your people? Would you speak to your people, and, and don't let us miss it, and what you want to say, say it, Lord. And let the stuff that needs to be heard in another season, let it be put on the shelf. But let the stuff for this season, let it find the way into the heart. And uh, Lord, mad, glad, sad, just do it. Father, thank you for doing it. And I just speak great and awesome change over your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's just say this. 
say, whatever. That's kind of what we're doing this morning. I mean, I give scriptures to the girls in the back or guys, but whatever, right? So let's go to Ephesians. No, I didn't give that to you, Rachel. Before we get going here, this is, uh, I just, I can't get past this. Now, we're going to be, we have been talking about faith and what God's doing. Um, avec faith, which is with, God is with you, and we'll be talking about that, but man, I just can't get past this, so Ephesians 2, and verse 4, do you already have it? Oh, she's fast, come on, it says, but God who's rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we're dead in trespasses, he made us alive together. Guys, for by grace you've been saved. And I'm, I just, you've heard this before, and it preaches so well, and you probably memorized it. But listen, it's by grace that we were saved. Next verse. And he raised us up together. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us. For by grace you've been saved through faith, but not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Amen? I'm just, I'm hit with this, like this morning as well. You didn't do anything to get saved. I'm, I'm speaking to myself. There's nothing you did other than saying yes to get saved. Is the Lord, and he's really good, amen? It was his grace. The reason you've accepted Jesus is because of his grace. Now, moving on just a little bit, next chapter, 3. Um, I'm just going to do this in verse 17. There's this beautiful grace that empowered me to get saved, and even then, when I got saved, it was the hardest thing I ever did. I remember standing and getting in front of 300 people that I did not know, I knew maybe 50 people when Angie and I were getting married, and the rest of them, I don't, know, I don't even know who these people are. That's hard enough to do, but when I had to accept Jesus, it was the fight of my life. My head and the demonic realm was just screaming not to do it, not to do it. It was the hardest forceful thing I had to do, and I was aware that heaven was fighting on my side. There was this thing that I couldn't see. There was this fight that was going on, and I got to tell you, pride is a powerful force. Here, come, please. And the, the preacher was on the television, and he was giving an invitation. And the invitation was so convicting that Angie and I were both, I think we were uh, sitting down watching it. And while he was preaching, he was about to say, all of you that, are, that you, you don't want to go to hell, you want to accept Jesus. And I was just about to do it, but I couldn't do it because of pride. Because my wife was right there. She wasn't looking at me. She wasn't going like that, but I felt her eyes on me, even though she wasn't looking at me. Pride and the demonic realm. And then I started to think this. Well, what's my dad going to think? What's my friends going to think? What is my coworkers going to think? I can't do this. It'll look so dumb. There's this huge fight and tension going on. And there was angels that were fighting, and there was a demonic. And I didn't even know anything about that, but you could feel it. And so the guy on the TV goes, now for all of you that were too pride-filled and you couldn't do it, I'm going to give you one more chance. And so, so I went like this. I went, hug me like that so that I knew that her eyes weren't looking at me. And so the guy led us in a salvation prayer and I bawled my eyes out and accepted Jesus into my heart. Me too. She did too. I got to tell you that just for us to do that, that was his grace to do that. It's by grace that we got saved. It wasn't anything that we did of ourselves. It's by grace that you are saved. You, everyone that's sitting in this place, if you've accepted Jesus, it was his grace. It was nothing that you did. That's how good he is. Amen.
I'm just going to finish reading this, and then we're going to move on. That Jesus would dwell in your hearts through faith. That you'd be rooted and grounded in love. That you'd be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the width, the length, the depth, the height, that you would get to know the love of Jesus, which passes knowledge that you'd be filled with the fullness of God. Amen? My goodness. Do that, God, in us. Lord, I just want to speak over us before we even go with what we think we're supposed to do. It was your grace, and it still is. Lord, it's nothing that we've done, and even if we operate in gifts, that's still you. That's still your grace. And even when we speak or don't speak or somebody gets healed, that's still you, and it's still your grace. Jesus, I pray in this season, let it be what was spoken of before, a selfless season that is filled with the power of God, that we would be able to go forward with you, not before you, with you. Rachel, can you put up that Luke scripture? Yeah. Lord, probably not a coincidence that we have kids making sounds and, and uh, encouraging us just to be like that as well. It was by his grace that you're saved. It's nothing you did. And whatever he gives you in the future, I mean, it's all his. He owns everything. All the cattle on a thousand hills, it's him. All the gold and silver, it's him. Anything that he gives you is his grace, but it's his good pleasure to do it. He's not, he doesn't have a, a checklist, and he'll show you afterwards everything he gave you. He loves you. For with God, my goodness, in this season, with him, nothing is impossible. But trying to do it yourself, hard. Um, yeah, Rach, put up the Matthew 17. I, I just think that even like a child, it's, it's time to start to see what the word is saying rather than trying to look where you don't qualify for the word. And so Matthew is one of them, and this is where they are trying to cast out uh, a demon in one of the boys. And Jesus says to them, because they're saying, why can't we do it? And he says, because of, of your unbelief. And usually when you read that, you go, ugh. Boy, these guys walked with Jesus, and if they couldn't do it, then silently you kind of think, well, that's me too. I, I can't do that either. And so you read this, and you start to disqualify yourself because he says, for I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you're going to say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But they messed it up, so we probably can't do it either. But what the word is actually saying is this. Dudes, if you got little tiny faith, even small faith can move a mountain. That's what the word is actually saying. But if you read it pre-disqualified, if you read it pre-not good enough, pre-no grace, that's what you'll see, is that you're not good enough, where the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. Even your little faith can move this mountain. Uh, what's the next scripture I gave you, Rach? Ah, here's another one. Now, Hebrews, you can go into uh, and you can read the, the heroes of faith, and some of them were hacked in two and sawn in two and all this kind of stuff. And for that, I go, I'd like to be disqualified, please, Lord. That, that part I'm good with passing by. But it goes on to say this, but without faith, it is impossible. And if you're reading with any kind of disqualification mindset, then you're reading it right word for word that somehow you're not able to please God. Because he goes on to say this, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Otherwise, you suck. Like that. But if you read this word without pre-disqualified and by the grace, because by the way, is because of his grace that he saved you. Hmm. Okay. Let me have your, your attention for a moment. I want you to say this, even if you don't believe it. Say, he likes me. Say, he loves me. Do you know that that's why you're saved? 
Do you know that he so loved you? That's John 3.16. He so loved you that he made himself come in the flesh as Jesus to die for you. That's grace. Put that back up, please. Or you can read it like this. Pre-loved, your faith pleases God. Even if it's just a little bit, your faith pleases God. So let's say this together. My faith pleases God. Amen. Um, I want to encourage you guys, because we're going to talk a little bit about faith today. Be an encourager. Let's say this together. Say, I am an encourager. Faith is kind of this delicate thing sometimes. And if you happen to tell someone else what you're believing, you feel like you've just kind of put it all out on the line. And somebody can destroy you in that moment. So I'm encouraging you, be an encourager. Somebody tells you what they're believing for, just why don't you come up along beside them and go, let's do that together. I'm going to believe with you. Amen? I need that and you need that. Thank you. Yeah, that is a good encouragement, actually. So put up a picture up there, please. Rach, start with one of them. Look at this. Now, I looked at these pictures. I pre-looked at them before. Now, I don't, it doesn't matter what you think. I'm telling you a truth. There is a majority in that picture. It's not a lot. In fact, it's a wee bit. But there's a majority in that picture. Do the next one, please, Rach. This one, too. If you're looking at this thing, say there's a majority. Do one more. Same thing. There's a majority in this. Fifty-one percent is enough to determine a decision. It's enough to win a vote. It's enough for you if you're a shareholder. It's enough. Even if it's just a little bit, that majority decision is enough. Amen? Yeah. Stepping out in faith is like this uh, very delicate thing. And even when you believe that God is asking you to step out in something, it can feel like that. I want you to know because of the grace of God, can you put that picture back up, Rach? It's okay for you to step out. In fact, go to the first one. I like the first one. Oh, that's like a barely. If that's, if that's on the scale, that's a 51% if that. And I want you to know something here today. It's okay to step out in that kind of faith. Now, if you're under the persuasion that faith has to be 100% when you step out and you're fully assured, that's probably a rarity. But 51% or just, I think that Jesus is asking me to step out in this. I believe that this is of the Lord. Are you sure? No. No, I'm not sure, but I'm stepping out in faith in this thing. Amen? I, what I want to do is what Jesus does for us. I want to take all the pressure of Christianity off of you because it was by grace that you've been saved and not of yourselves. And your faith with his grace is powerful and you don't need to know everything and you don't need to have all the answers. But sometimes when the Lord is leading you and he starts to lead you in something, actually, Acts 10.38, do you, did I give it to you? Did I? I did. I did. Praise the Lord. Now, this is one that I've used for a long time, and, and I just put my own name in there. How God anointed Darren of Laclabish with the Holy Spirit and with power. And I went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God is with me. Amen. I know this scripture. I've learned this scripture. It is a truth, and I've stepped out so many times, whether it's in the hospital or just on the street or something like that, and sometimes I'd rather just walk by, and the Lord would, you'd feel this thing, this pull. 
I would feel this, this thing on the inside. And was it 100%? No. And if somebody would have come along right before I would have laid hands and prayed for that person and went like this, are you sure that you should be praying for this person? No. I'm not sure that God will heal him. But I know his word and I trust him. And it could be that the Lord is going to heal this guy or girl. Amen? Can you imagine if you had a church that was willing to take that 100% lie off that all of Christianity is on you and you have to be 100% sure or else? That's got to be liberty for someone. Now that course that we're taking, he kind of puts it like this. He says it like this. It's intellectual agreement, which is knowing that something is true. In other words, you've read it in the word. You know that it's true. Intellectual agreement plus trust, that you trust in the Lord, equals the beginning of faith. Amen? It may be that the Lord will heal. Look at some of the heroes of faith. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I, I got a billy goat stuck in there. Yeah. You know, there, there's the king who's saying, boy, you bow down or I'm going to throw you into the fire. And they who love the Lord and been raised in the Lord, they're going, man, I, I can't do that. And so the king adds a little bit of punishment onto it because he's ticked off. And he says, anyone, you know the story. You get thrown into the fire. I'm going to heat that thing up seven times. Comes to them and says, you going to bow down? And they didn't do it arrogantly. They went, no, we're not. Our God will save us. Are you sure? No. No, we're not. In fact, they even say it like that. No, no. Even if he doesn't save us, we're still going to trust him. Amen? Are you 100% sure? No. I'm, hey, wait. Rachel? Yeah, no, I gave this to her, though. I just wasn't sure how that was going to work. Matthew 26. Look, guys, if you are under the impression that you need 100% faith and you have to be 100% sure about all this stuff, you'll probably not do a whole bunch for Jesus. But if you've got this thing on the inside, I think this is Jesus. Are you sure? No. No, I'm not. But based on his word and what I've read... This scripture keeps coming up, and I'm trust. I believe that this is the Lord. Do you know what you can do stepping out for Jesus just like that? Look at Jesus. Who this guy's this is Jesus, who goes a little bit farther when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane because he knows he's got to crawl up on that cross, and because of the grace that's given to him, do that graceful act for me. Even Jesus is saying this. He prays and says, "Oh Father, if it's possible." Jesus said this, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless. Jesus, are you 100% sure that you should be doing this at that moment? Whoa. Guys, gals, little ones, older ones, take the pressure off of this whole Christian walk. My goodness. Time to trust back in the Lord again. Amen? You've just been, I say you, it's all of us. We've just been through a minimum of two years of doubt and unbelief. And being told in some way, and you're still being told right now, you need to conform. You need to conform to a new way of thinking. You need to conform to this. Your independence and your individuality is no longer needed. Your belief in any kind of God is no longer needed. Your belief in what life is and what death is is no longer needed. You need to conform. Your belief in what creation is is no longer needed. You need to conform. Right. Just 51%. Just stepping out a little bit and believing in what Jesus says, just that can change your world. Amen? Yeah. 
Faith is being okay with not knowing everything. Faith is being okay with maybe God will do this. Amen? I like that. Now, when you're stepping out in this faith that maybe God will do something, um, this is what I say for this season. You're setting yourself up for an encounter. That is a very cool, very awesome, very kind of scary thing. And I just have a sense that the men that are going to this Grand Prairie thing as well, maybe it's the season, maybe it's the timing, but there's going to be an encounter. And is it a little bit scary? Yeah! Am I sure? No, I'm not. But I have this sense that God is leading men right now. I have this sense that it's going to happen. Are you 100% sure? No, I'm not. But I'm going to go on his word that that's what he does. And I'm going to trust him that when we go, we will be transformed. Something's going to happen. How do you know? I don't, but I have his word. 51% sure, it's enough. Um, Genesis 12, 1, why don't you put that up there, please, Rach? Do you know what? Can we just give, like, the, the media people and the sound people a hand? I put them through some stuff. We appreciate you. 51, 52%? 75%. 75%. Yeah. 75. When we did, Angie and I did Bible school, ministry training center, whatever it was, it was, I think we had 15 or 16 people there. And we were terrified because we had to give up our jobs to do this. And I remember the one fellow that came in, um, he was our instructor, and he was a faith giant. The things that he had done and accomplished, holy moly. And so he's, he's going to teach us, and he, he comes and he gets into his desk, and he leans over his desk, and he's just looking at us like this, and he just continues to stare at us. And, and he goes like, and by the way, he, I think, I'm not going to say how much money this guy makes. It's, it's like obscene amounts of money. And he's looking at us like this, and he goes, I envy you. And I'm thinking to myself, because I saw him drive up in a Porsche. I'm thinking, I think you got that little misguided right now. And he goes, he starts to go like this, and this is a faith giant. He goes, you guys are right on the edge right now. If God does not come through for you, you're done. He says, I admire your faith that you're here right now. You so need him or you are undone. The presence of the Lord just fills that room all of a sudden. Despite what I thought, oh my goodness, his presence came. Just 51%. My dad died. We watched it, Angie and I. Motorcycle crash. And we had communicators in our helmets. And so we're, we're taking a, a nasty corner. And me and Angie have communicators. My dad doesn't. And so I told her, uh, slow down for this corner. So she takes the corner. And I'm going forward. And she says, yeah, you can just hear it. There's an atmosphere. Everything changed. I just heard these words. like It was like an echo. I don't think your dad made it. <sighs> Remember? Oof, brutal. And so I slowed my bike down, and I didn't want to turn around. I turned around, and we went back. And the closer we got, the uglier it got. And so he missed it bad. And it went, he hit a, they have big concrete triangular um, partitions. He hit that, and then it threw him, and he hit a, an embankment, but it's rock. It's not grass. It's all rock. And it mangled his bike. And so we just, we got there like, oh my God, like this, the closer we got. And it was just still dust and debris and all this stuff. The closer we got, and we're like, uh-oh, like this. 
Did we think that our dad was going to live and we had this boldness of faith and we just walk? No. No, we were scared. And we started to pray. And as we started to pray, we started to believe just maybe God can heal him. And we started walking towards him. We never even took our helmets off. And the closer we got, we started to walk. We started to walk, and things would come to us as we would go. So, and we didn't even say, hey, do we agree on praying this? It just happened. We started to go, and we started to rebuke death. So we rebuked death, and we commanded death to come off. We commanded his body to be healed, and breath of life, come! And it's, his, his bike was mangled, laying on the side of the, the ditch. It's like someone picked him up. You know how you would see how someone carries a person or a child and then sets them down like that? That's what it looked like, which is impossible. Everything's mangled. It's a mess. and He's not breathing. And, and it's like someone set him down perfectly. In fact, can you hold the microphone? This is, this is what it looked like. He was not just, he, he was laying on the bike, had his helmet laying on the, the handlebars, his back, the tank was here, his bum was on the seat like this, and his, his, his arms were crossed over like this. God caught him and laid him down, and we said, life, come, like that. And were we bold and all? No, we're scared, but just believed that God would do it. So he's laying there, and he goes like this. Starts to breathe. Breath of life comes. And do you know that out of all of this mangled mess and all of a sudden out of nowhere, and seriously out of nowhere, paramedics come. Now they've, got, they've got their bag with them. They roll out all their stuff, their saline solution. They clean out rocks out of his eyes. They're on holidays. Just happened to be there. Well, of course they did, Lord. We got out of the way, and whatever faith we had at the moment, it's, it's, like, it's like the Lord went, you're done, guys. I got this. First responders show up. Everyone shows up. Ambulance shows up. My dad gets up and walks into the ambulance. And after all this mangling thing, do you know what he got? Two stitches in his lip. That's it. Hey, a little bit of a chip in the tooth. That's, it's impossible. Were we 100%? No. We're like that scale. All you need, guys... With the Lord, if you want to do it by yourself, go. Go have your 100%. If you want to step out with the Lord like he asks us to, all you need, I just believe God is doing this and asking me to do that. You change the world around you. You also make a whole bunch of friends because you need people. Amen? Okay. So this is Abraham, father of faith, father of all this stuff. Uh, who, you know, he, he's the beginning. So God meets him and says, the Lord says to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house, which is actually, it reads quick, but it's a big ask. Leave everything you know, leave all your people, leave everything and go to a land that I'm not going to tell you right now, by the way. I ain't telling you nothing, but I am telling you to leave. Can you imagine the talk with the family? Are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm not. This is so weird. But I just have this sense that the Lord is asking me to go. And God says this, I will show you, but I'm not going to do it yet. But as you go, he shows. That's faith. Amen? And if you need to know the season that you're in, that's your season. If we're waiting for a government change, or the laws to change? No. Amen? Okay. Now look at this. Um, this is what I say. And I believe it's true based on the word and based on trust in the Lord. If you step out in just that 51% faith, I, I'm telling you, you get ready because God will encounter you. Go to Genesis 17. Now, time is accelerated and time is going by at a far, far faster pace now than ever before. And maybe every generation could say that, but I am saying things have been quickened and paced very, very fast now. Anyone else notice how fast time is going by now? 
and how fast change is happening and how rapid morality and everything else is like time is like whoosh. A little bit different than this, but here we go anyway. Genesis 17. Abraham was 90 years old. This is 24 years after God met him. He said, Abe, I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff with you. If you follow the Lord, and Abe stepped out 51%. I'm not even sure, but I'm going to do this, God. If you follow him, I'm going to speak over you. And if you continue to follow him, get ready, he'll encounter you. So Abe is 99 years old when the Lord appeared to Abraham. And he says to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I'm going to make this covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceeding. Now look at this, verse 3. Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. Abraham was not being reverent. John did the same thing in the book of Revelation. God shows up in his person and you cannot stand that kind of glory. Down he goes on his face, just like John. He got no strength left in him. Boy, that's an encounter. He says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of many nations. No longer you're going to be called. Gets a name change. So did Jacob, by the way, because he had enough guts to do the same thing too. And if you think, oh, I've been so hard done by, live a life like Jacob. Trying to get a, trying to get a chick, and he's got to wait 14 years. Because his father-in-law keeps lying to him and then wants to kill him and steals all of his stuff. It's not a good day. But I'm going to call your name Abraham. For I've made you the father of many nations. I'm going to make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations from you. Kings shall come from you. I'll establish my covenant with you. And I'm just going to do stuff. I'm going to be amazing to you and for you. And if you're thinking, well... This is kind of Old Testament stuff. Galatians 3 says that all these promises that God gave Abraham are now yours by faith. There's seven of them, in fact. And if you would step out and believe that those are yours, even 51%, you may have them. Majority. Let's talk about racial tension just for a moment. Say amen. There's this guy in Acts 10. His name's Cornelius. And he's a Roman centurion. In fact, he was from Rome. He's not just Roman. I'm a Roman. He's from the city. He's from the place. He's from Rome. And there he is in Jerusalem, but he's making a huge difference. He's decided to forsake all of his Thor gods and everything else and worship the one true God. He's a giver. He prays to God. And so God sees all this stuff, and he does something. He sends an angel to this guy. He's not even an Israelite. He's not even a Jew. And God sends an angel to this guy and says, You're amazing, man. Your prayers and your giving has come up as a memorial before God. That is so cool. Say encounter. He's not a Jew, though. And so God says this, I'm going to send this guy, Pete, to you. Now, he is an Israelite. He is a Jew. And he's going to show you the ways of the Lord. He's going to show you. And so Cornelius is going, that is so cool. So he tells all of his, he tells his, uh, his servants and the rest of his soldiers, what's going to happen? Can you imagine the talk? You're going to ask a Jew to come here and tell us what we're supposed to do. Say racial tension. By the way, in our day, there's some racial tension. So Pete is up on his roof and... He's fasting, and he's hungry. That's what happens. And so God shows up in a dream, a vision, and he lets down this sheet, and it's full of all the animals that he's not supposed to eat because they're unclean. And a voice says, well, rise and eat all this stuff. 
And Pete goes like this, no way, God, you know me. I keep the law. I do all this stuff. And God says, hey, dude, do not call unclean what I call clean. Say racial tension. So he does this three times. And a knock comes on the door for Pete. And, and, and the guys come in and they basically say, hey, I think you're supposed to come to Cornelius. And, and, and Pete's going like this on the inside. I can't do that. I'm a Jew. I do not hang out with these Roman people. They are, you know, unclean, all of that kind of stuff. So the Holy Spirit tells Pete, go and doubt nothing. Are you sure? No, I'm not. I'm about this much sure that I should do this. And so he goes and he steps into the house and Cornelius is there and they try to bow down to Pete and Pete goes, man, stand up. Just a man. Why am I here? Are you here to hear the words of life? So Pete just starts to speak and he just starts to pour out on these people. Before he does, he's even going like this. You know it's illegal for me to be here? Do you know it's against our law for me being a Jew to associate with you? I've been in, in, in places, even in Lac La Biche, where I've had people bump me out of the way because they hate me so they can get up and pay for something first. And they don't even know me. I don't even know who they are. And they pre-hate me because of something that someone's done. I'll tell you something, my friends. Generational hatred, you don't even need to know anything about it. Generational hatred, all you've got to do is surrender to it. And it'll fill you with hatred so much for a people or a race that you want to get payback. But the problem is this, you can never kill enough people to satisfy it. And no one can ever grovel enough to satisfy it. And I wanted to go and tell him, I said, if you push me out of the way, if you tell me off, will that satisfy that thing on the inside? What will satisfy it? Nothing. Hitler was given into that as well. So Pete steps up and he says, man, I see in part that God shows no partiality. And he starts to speak. And as he starts to speak, the Holy Spirit comes down falls on Cornelius and all of his family and all of his friends, and they all begin to prophesy and speak in tongues, and one of the greatest revivals ever happens because someone said, what if? Maybe God's on this. You're not going to satisfy racial tension with an election. You're not going to satisfy it by making enough apologies, although that's really good stuff. You're going to satisfy it by the grace and by the love of God and by somebody, somebody stepping out. The last um, Alberta link we went to, Angie and I, we went to, was in Calgary. And uh, I think they had... They had two people come and speak. And they were, they were First Nation people as well in Calgary. Oh, my goodness, was that powerful. And there was nothing planned. There was nothing that was supposed to happen. There was no, they just, they were invited to come. That's it. And at one point, they just, they kind of invited them up. And said, ah, I just think that they're supposed to come up here. Are you sure? No. No, we're not. But I do believe because God wants to draw everyone together. He calls that the mystery of the gospel, drawing together the Jew and the Gentile, two people that really do not like each other at all, and they have a whole generational history of hatred, but it is the mystery how God can draw those two together, and put away the hatred, and out of two people make one that he calls holy. How does he do that? By his grace, not by your efforts. But just by believing, having one person that maybe would step out, just maybe God wants to do this. So we step out, we're watching this, and the First Nation people come up, and, and I think one of them even sang and played on their drum. Powerful! Whatever presence of God was in there was magnified like times ten. 
And the message he spoke of love and forgiveness, and he was a funny guy too. He had some great humor to him too. He was awesome. Did we expect that? No. Was there healing? You bet there was. Could shaking hands and apologies have done that? About a thousand years of that, maybe. But somebody stepped out and said, just maybe. Years ago, when we were at one in Edmonton, and that one was the brutal one when they had the, they had, that was the Jews. They, they had uh, generational Jews, and they also had generational Germans come. And somebody had paid for the German family to come, not just one, for the whole family. There's a rich guy, bought the, yeah, loaded the jet up, and just felt that he was supposed to pay for this family from Germany to come to this uh, gathering in Edmonton. So he didn't know why, but he just did. He had 51%. I think this is what I'm supposed to do. So they all show up, and we have this huge gathering that's happening there, powerful. And a, a Jewish guy, a rabbi comes up, and, and he's, he's up there, and he's speaking. And it's good what he's speaking. It's really great. And you are so aware that this man has this heritage for Israel and, 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 and uh, the Hebrews. You're just so, you just, you sense it and feel it. And so the conductor of the whole thing, David Damien, is there and he's going, I think we're supposed to do something here. And he, David Damien's so amazing at doing this. And he goes, I think we're supposed to bring up this, uh, honor this, yeah, we'll bring up this German family because they're all here. Amazing that they're all here. Let's use this. So they all come up and then David Damien says, you know, I think that the, the, the Jewish guy should pray for the German guy the, 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 and bless him. And he couldn't do it. And I mean, it was a horrible, brutal moment because he, whew, he wailed. Uh, he tried to pray for the German guy, couldn't do it because of the generations of pain and hatred and loathing and death and everything. And he so couldn't do it. And there's 5,000 of us and it's televised and we're watching it. And so the Hebrew guy can't do it. He finally just bends over and lets out a horrible shrieking wail that went all over that place, just cries like this, and down he goes. So the German guy is thinking this, I think I'm supposed to go and pick him up. And he tried to pick him up like this, and he, it's like he's picking up this guy who's absolutely lifeless, and the Jew guy tries to shake it off and tries to get away from him, but he can't do it. And this old German man who's strong just holds him and hugs him, and I just felt like it was the father and the prodigal son, how the father saw him. For so, That German guy encompassed the, the presence of the father in that moment and held him and went, I'm not letting go. Get it out. Just get it out. Just like Jacob when he was with, you wrestled with an angel all night. You watched the wrestling. We're watching it. It was brutal and amazing. I was just gutted. I am German. So you felt shame and everything else in those, just terrible. And the, after the time passed, the Jewish guy finally received strength. He received the love of the Father through a generational enemy. And the healing that happened in that room, I cannot tell you the joy and the power that filled that room. Everyone felt like you are walking 10, 15 feet off the ground. I've never felt so clean as seeing something like that. I've never felt that clean in my life. Absolutely amazing. How did that happen? 51% faith. Did God just restore between the Germans and the Jews in that one time? I think he did something amazing and did a major blow to the camp of the enemy to 5,000 people who were in that place. Were they sure? No, they weren't. But even a mustard seed faith can change the earth. Thank you, Lord. I know what I have to do now. I'm going to ask you to stand. used to hear this a lot. Um, they would say it jokingly, at least in, in my generation before, they would say this when it come to doing something. They would say, uh, uh, don't let fear and common sense stop you. 
or however that goes. I say this, throw away the common sense and definitely throw away the fear. Guys, when the Lord's asking you to be bold and courageous, he's not asking you to run blindly into things. Bold and courageous really means this. I believe that the Lord is leading me in this area, and I'm going to go there trusting in him all of the way. I'm not going to be arrogant and throw my sword all over the place, but I'm going to trust God all the way through this. Am I 100% sure? No, I'm not. But I'm trusting in Jesus all the way. The Bible says in Jeremiah that he's already given you a purpose and a calling, and he already knows who you are. I believe fully that as well, that for every person, I don't care, online or here, he does have a call on you. But so does the enemy. And his call for you is to make you bitter, maybe get you caught in generational stuff, and have a hatred that you don't even know is yours, but you sure feel it. It's all linked to fear. I can't walk with you and make God do stuff with you, but I can do what he's saying. I think this morning the Lord is saying this, have my people come out of agreement with fear. And if they come out of agreement with fear, leave the rest to me, I will take them from here to there where they need to be. And we don't need to get into the theology of this, Fear is a real deal. It showed up in Genesis when God said, where are you, Adam? Why are you hiding? And he says this, I was hiding because I was afraid. Where did fear come from? Lord, I thank you for your grace this morning, which is, God, it's so, it's so amazing. You do things that we don't have to. Father, I thank you for your great and awesome people, your sons and daughters. And Lord, you said that it was for freedom that you've set us free. So God, I want to pray over your people. But Lord, I'm asking right now, would you show every person in here, not me, Lord, you do it. Would you show, I don't even know how you do it, but would you show every person in here where fear has tried to stop them in their lives? Maybe it's past, maybe it's now, but just show them, Lord, right now. In fact, I pray right now that the light of Christ would come and that every hidden and dark thing would be exposed to the light of Jesus right now. God, I thank you that darkness cannot comprehend, it cannot overcome the light, for the light shineth forth into that dark area and illuminates. So, Lord, show now every place. Maybe it's relationships, Lord. I don't know, but show them where fear has tried to stop them. And just give them a moment. This is your breakthrough moment. This is not our condemnation time has been lost moment. Time means nothing to God. He lives past that realm. This is our area where we come out. And that's what we're going to do today. Doesn't matter how long you've been lied to. What matters is what we do now. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. What comes out of your mouth. So let's say this together because we are going to come out of agreement with that thing saying this by faith. Are you 100% sure? No. But based on the word of God and trusting him and what he's leading me to do, I believe that this is our moment. So let's say this together. Fear? Oh, no, no, no. You don't address something that's been manipulating you from a weak standpoint. You address it from a standpoint of things are going to change. So we say this. Say, fear? fear. I see you. And I do not agree with you. You have held me back and hurt me long enough. I speak today 
that you are a defeated foe. And in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and by my testimony, I command you right now, go in Jesus' name. And I decree from this point on, you have lost your hold over me. You will no longer hold me back. For today, I choose Jesus. I choose courage. I choose his word. By his stripes, I am healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have a little testimony on that, actually. I uh, was really scared yesterday. I was going through a lot of fear, a lot of overwhelming stuff. And uh, I was went for a nap. I gave myself a time out. And as I was napping, I, when I woke up, I heard the Lord say to me, invite me in. Invite me in to that situation. So I invited him into that situation. I'm like, Lord, sorry, I didn't. I tried to do it on my own. And I didn't ask you to help me. And I'm sorry for that. And he, I invited him in, and as I was inviting him in, I remember the story by David Jeremiah, and he said, this little girl was on an airplane, and there was turbulence, and she was really calm, and she was coloring. And later on, this guy that was actually in his 80s was actually really scared, and he went up to her after, and he was like, how come you weren't scared? And she says, because my daddy's the pilot. And she knew her dad was going to land that plane. And so, Lord, thank you that we can have that trust and we can have that faith in you, that you are our pilot and you are with us and for us. And we thank you that we can trust you by faith one little step at a time. And thank you that for we can overcome fear because we can invite you into it. In Jesus' name. One more thing we're going to do. If uh, actually, yeah, this is a bigger one. Please don't be looking around. If you would say that you're a person, and please don't look at your actions. I'm asking you to listen to the Lord. If you are a person that's been influenced by generational hatred, just put up your hand. No looking around. And I mean it's affected you. You see people and you feel judgment or you feel judged by other people and it makes you angry. Just put up your hand. No looking around. You're signifying to the Lord, not to any other person. good. You can put your hand down. I decree over you the truth of the Lord that out of every tribe and every nation and every tongue, he is making one. And that every lie that has been operating in your life, even now, is coming to an end. If you would allow the work of the Lord in you, he will bring you to a place where the mystery of the gospel will fully take place in you. So even right now, breath of God and love of God, would you come upon your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus? And as you breathe on them, Lord, I decree that strongholds, even the claws of the strongholds are losing. They are losing. I speak that to you. You are losing your grip and your hold. And the eyes of understanding are being opened right now over your people. And God, I decree your word over them today that you would grant to us, Lord, that are affected by that spirit, according to the riches of your glory, that we would be strengthened with might through your spirit in the inner man. Jesus, that you would dwell in our hearts through faith, that, Lord, we would be rooted and grounded in your love. And your love is also light, Lord. So where that light is, darkness cannot comprehend and it cannot stay. That you would be able, we would be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the width and length and depth and height that you would know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and that we would be filled with the fullness of God 
So hatred, move over right now because the love of God is coming in. And where that light comes in, even right now, darkness, you must bend your knee in Jesus' name. So thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for coming. Let's say this together. Say, Holy Spirit, come. I invite you. Move in in that place. So, Lord, thank you for moving in over that place right now. Generational hatred, the Lord exposes you, exposes you, exposes you. Generational hatred, you are losing your place. You must move aside right now to the glory and to the person and kingship of the Lord Jesus. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus and the mystery of the gospel is Lord forever and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, let your love that is rooted fill up your people today. In Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a praise clap, please. It kind of solidifies what he is doing. It is a yes and an amen for what he is doing. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I also pray that the lie of carrying all the gospel would come off of your people. And just maybe faith, based on your word and trusting in you, would begin to come so forward but that we'd be so aware that we're walking with you. So aware that as we're stepping out in faith, you're with us because you never leave and you never forsake. Bless your people today in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you also for the men's conference, for the huge change that you are doing in the men, the encounter. I also speak that you're no respecter of persons, that what you're breaking through there, you'll do here, you'll do all over the place, Lord. So thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Yeah, give him a praise clap. He's so good. Whoa.